Come as you can hear though. So they're in your German as we are trying to get some documented history. Let me see if our tour guide is going to share with us all the in-depth traumatic drama in these wicked dungeons and chambers. Or if he's going to give us a watered down wash version. So let's uh, see. We're all lined up and uh, what we shot a little while ago was the uh, dungeons and torture chambers. As long as it's not filled with water, it's fine. You'll never have the chance again, so now it's not filled with water. You're going to fill it up with water, then you go down. Okay. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, just before I continue with this, I'm just going to um, give the um, information on the dungeon and torture chamber, okay? Are you going to give us a real story? The real bloody in-depth story? No, I'm um, yeah. actually, I'm um, sir, like again, you in South Africa, that's the messy story already. You know? Alright, gotcha. That's all. But for now, gentle ladies, gentlemen, firstly, I've said the first room you entered right there was the torture chamber. The room on the inside next door was the original dungeon of the dark hole. But ladies and gentlemen, the reason why the two was put together, it was because whoever was locked in the dungeon could obviously still hear everything happening inside the torture chamber, which makes sense, right? And number two, the flooring you were walking on the inside, that was not the original. It used to be a clay floor with Beach pits stuck into it with straw that only covered the floor. And as you've entered on the right hand side, there was a desk. That is where the clerk sat. He was the person who had to record down every single thing that happened in that very room. Ladies and gentlemen, back then, whatever crimes people have committed, they were taken to court. Court was going to find them guilty. But even if the court said guilty, they still would not be sentenced yet. Why? Because the court wanted themselves to confess to the crime out of guilt. Now, if they did not confess, they were taken to that room and that is where they were made to confess. If it was more than one, one will be kept standing inside the torture chamber, that is inside the dungeon, close the center door. And once they were inside of that dungeon, they were lucky if they were given something to eat. Now, ladies and gentlemen, according to them, there were many, many punishable offenses. Example, if they were even a guard or a soldier on duty at night and they were caught falling asleep, that too was a punishable offense. There were also different methods of torture, but I'll only speak of the obvious we saw. Number one, on the center door, there's a very new display of a whoop. It's called the cat O oh, nine tails, nine leather straps. What they forgot to add, each end of the strands had sharp metal hooks. The lashes, nothing less than 40, but would go up to 100 and 20. That's one. Number two, we all saw the hook hanging there, the handle taken, tied behind the backs, tie up the feet. Hook them upside down, pull them up, tie the knot. Remember the flooring, the peach pits, didn't confess, loosen the knot, then on their heads, that would happen until they confess. But, ladies and gentlemen, it did not stop there. Why? Because for some miracle, they were still alive, then confess, then the punishment would only start. Example. If their punishment was hanging to death, that was going to take place on the outside. Why? Because their bodies were kept hanging there for a couple of days as an indication to others. Whatever wrong they would do here, this is exactly what will happen to them. Now very lastly, back in the days, people were only meant to spend one day inside the dungeon. But there was also a man by the name of Adam Tass. He was also of Dutch descendant, but back then he too did not like the laws and the ways of the Dutch East India Company. He didn't want to pay all the taxes they wanted. They caught him, threw him inside the dungeon for 13 months. And the day they finally decided, well, he's free to go, he stepped to the outside. When the rays of the sun caught his eyes, he became blind. Any questions? Wow. Welcome to the dolphin pool or the dolphin fountain. Now this area was the governor's private dining quarters. He is named Simon or Simon van der Stel. He was the only person, including his very important guests, 
who is a lot like you. And you also had a passion for plants and trees. That's the reason for the pot plants all around the pool. A town called Stellenbosch and also Simonstown was named after Simon or Simon van der Stel. That side of the building is called Hit Back Haze. Back it's in Afrikaans or Dutch word for bake. So that used to be the bakery. However, ladies and gentlemen, when the British returned to the Cape for the second time, they felt they needed bigger training grounds for the soldiers. So in 1860, they demolished this whole area. But between 1803 and 1808, here was a European lady. Her name, Lady Anne Barnard. She was known as the first lady on the Cape. By the way, also the first European lady to climb Table Mountain. One of her many good skills. She was a very good artist. In 1980, they found sketches that she drew depicting the whole area. Then, with the first big construction work of this sport between 1985 and 1993, took the sketches, opened up in the center where the first fountain was, found the evidence, rebuilt the whole area back to its former glory. Although, ladies and gentlemen, the fountain, that is not the original because the original fountain has never ever been recovered. Very lastly, on the pool. Back in the days, the pool itself was fed from a fresh water stream all the way from Table Mountain. That is why Lady Anne Barnard could also use the pool as one of her bathing areas. Lastly, building to the far side, that is the old chapel or church. Ladies and gentlemen, between the two wooden gates, on the floor, there's a slight step sticking up. Please be careful. Our very last stop, the archway, kindly follow me. It seemed like you didn't really want to tell us who were locked in the chambers and tortured in there. Well, we already know. So. Yeah, so we're family, uh, you know, we have that document You ain't got to state the obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I knew he was going to water wash that one. But it's all good family. Uh, we have incredible documentation from the dungeons, Cape Coast and Elmina in Ghana, where it tells you the full story yeah, of the wicked before, like we, European colonizers. We, we have to study their history. Right. Too. We just can't just study our own because that's how we lost the first thing. Absolutely, yeah. We have to be well-rounded. Well they studied all of us. Learned the language, everything. Yeah.